Here we come on a turn number four, 15 lap, Northeastern Vintage Dirt Feature Events, Dan White, the distinctive Hardwood Tours number 26 car, takes off into the number one position. Henry Eska drops the uh, Jack Johnson 12 car down to the inside. We'll work down the back straightaway. Bobby Snyder, the 88 machine, works into the number three spot. Here comes the one of Drew Evanike down to the inside. Evanike puts a move on Richie Padgett's 918 car as they work on a turn number four this time. Lap number one goes up in lights. Stan White is your race leader. Wait leads the way right now. Yeska down to the inside. Bobby Snyder holds on to spot number three. Evanike takes over spot number three. Pa for four. Padgett back to the number five spot. Here's Howard Murphy. Remember, he started, or Mike Murphy in the 73 car, started way back in 12th spot. Runs back there now in spot number seven. Field comes out of turn number four. Yes, got out to the inside on Bobby Snyder. Snyder in the Paulus Metalworks 88 car. Good friend, of course, with a former dirt track campaigner here at the Orange County Speedway. Earl Paulus was gone on to asphalt modified fame and glory. And Pernell Snyder out of Palmerton, Pennsylvania, keeping a toe on race leader Stan White, riding aboard that 26 entry. White can hear the horsepower in the background as Bobby Snyder tries to make a move down to the inside. Snyder got a lot of talent through the turns, but it looks like White may have just a tad bit bigger power plant down the straightaway. White still your leader, Pernell Snyder second. Third spot is Henry Yeska with Evanite closing in in spot number four. Now Murphy made his way up to the number five spot. Padgett back to slot number six. Seventh is the 11 of Howie Murphy. Mike Murphy is in the 73 car. Mike Murphy in that 73 trying to close in back there in slot number five. Yellow lights on the speedway. We'll tell you why in just a second. That was Bert Irwin who dropped off the pace down in turn number three. Taking the car down behind pit wall. 46 of Bert Irwin was uh, way up out of the groove there. Thought he could not get down. Well, they'll go back to green flag racing this time. Stan White lets her drift way up the banking out of turn number four. And Bobby Snyder gets a fight down of turn number four. Snyder puts a move on the outside and took that outside starting spot to his advantage to pick up the number one spot down the back straightaway. Stan White second, here comes Yeska. Henry Yeska makes a move to the wild side, down there in turn number three and four. Yeska powering that Jack Johnson 12 car into the number two spot right now. White losing ground to spot number three, Evanite fourth. Mike Murphy back there in spot number five. Murphy runs the number five spot, three cars wide for the battle for the number six. Howie Murphy is in the 11 for seventh right now. Mikey Padgett eighth, Ray C back there in spot number nine. C usually makes his way up through the pack a whole lot quicker than he is tonight in that subway number five car, but way out front right now, picking up about a six car length move, is Bobby Snyder in the number 88 car. We know him as Bobby, his formal name is Pernell Snyder. Rarely do we know him by that name, but a long time fan of motorsports, a big sprint car fan, him and his wife and his son travel the East Coast a lot of times on a weekend, uh, visiting sprint car races from Florida, all the way up to the upstate of New York. Here's Bobby out of turn number four right now. Seven laps down on the top side of things. Henry Yeska second. Now Mike Murphy comes to play for spot number three. Murphy up on the wild side of things. Picks up the number three spot, putting White back to fourth. Bur and uh, Mike Bur Howie Murphy back there in spot five. Mike Murphy in the 73 car. He is now in the third spot. White fourth, then Howie Murphy fifth. Ray C sixth, Drew Evanite fading to spot number seven. Mikey Padgett in spot number eight. Coming up on lap traffic already as Kyle Van Tassel about to go a lap down to Bobby Snyder's 88 car. Down the back straightaway, Van Tassel goes high, a not so safe way to get by a lap car, but Van Tassel drifted high, opened up the inside for the leader to go by. Pernell Snyder brings him out of turn number four this time. Snyder on top of the world right now, as Jeska tries to get around Van Tassel, a lap car, and that's gonna let Mike Murphy close the gap back there in spot number three. Yeska took the 12 car to the inside. Evanike, well, almost said hello to the masonry down there. Caution lights come on the speedway. Drew Evanike, the number one car, went way wide down there between one and two and just tapped the masonry. That brings out the yellow right now after nine laps down. Nine down, three to go. 11th would then be the one car. Drew Evanike followed by the 913, or the 13K of Kyle Van Tassel. 
Caution lights have been turned out, going back to green flag racing this time. Here we come on a turn number four, quickly go back to green flag racing action. Out of turn number four, Bobby Snyder seeing three to go this time by. Snyder's car working very well on the big 5.8 mile hard play. Biggest track he's had that car on yet since he built it early this spring. Pulling away from Yeska down the back straightaway. Snyder works down there through turns number three and four right now on the Jeff Strunk 88 machine. Yeska can't close the gap back there. Neither can the 73 car Bob Mike Murphy. 15 lap feature event. That's right, 15, not 12 on the board tonight. Yeska back there in the bridesmaid spot. Can't close the gap. Throwing very hard down the straightaways. Works into the number two spot. Looks like he may be settling for the second place finish after all. Yellow lights on the speedway. Possibly the inside of turn number four, one car around backwards. I'm not sure if that's uh, Bert. No, it's not Bert Irwin. Could be the 913. That was the 11. A car made famous throughout the tri-state area for many years back in the 70s by Johnny Harrell. Remember, he did real well down at the old Nazareth Half Mile Raceway for so many uh, Sunday night shows. Here we come out of turn number four right now. And Bobby Snyder knows that time is winding down. Just about see the smile on his face from here. Wife and young son in the pit area. Well, family looking on from the pit stall right now. We can almost see the smile on Kyle's face from here as he watches his dad go down the straightaway, holds on to the number one spot. Many years being a race fan throughout the northeastern part of the United States, and they traveled all over to sprint car shows all the way down to Florida there in springtime. Definitely going to be a memorable night in Perdell Snyder's racing uh, career as he works out of turn number four right now. White flag coming on the speedway. Four more left-hand turns, and it's going to be a celebration in the Snyder family household tonight. Works down the back straightaway for the final tour of duty. Yeska is second. Coming through turns number three and four. Checkered flag flies. The winner of the Northeast Vintage Racing Club. 15 lap feature from Palmerton. Bobby Purnell Snyder. Henry Yeska second. Third is the 73 of Mike Murphy. Followed by Stan White and Drew Evanike. guy's favorite driver for so many years was Jeff Strunk and he modeled it after his 1988 ride. First time on the track here at the Orange County Speedway and what a job he did. Bobby Purnell Snyder. Good friend of mine for many years down there in Pennsylvania. And certainly will be a night that he will never forget here at the Orange County Fair Speedway. Well, he quickly pops the helmet off. Bobby, I gotta be the first guy to shake your hand. I'll tell you what, long time we've traveled in a race together. Probably a night you never thought you'd see so quick. Woo, this is awesome. This is only my fourth actual race, man. This is just unbelievable. And I, first of all, I gotta thank my wife and son. They're back in the pits. Can't get the wheelchair through the mud, so unfortunately they're not out here with us. But thank all you guys for coming out and supporting this division. This is awesome. 
had a chance to visit many tracks uh, throughout the early part of your season, your early part of your career with this finished car. Probably never thought you'd pick up a checkered flag in a track like this so early on. I didn't because every time we went somewhere, it rained. <laughs> I'll tell you what, not to say that it won't be chasing us throughout the weekend. Hey, Bobby, great job. And I'll tell you what, I hope it's not the last time we get a chance to talk to you in victory lane. I don't think it will be. Thank you, Tim. All right, Bobby Steiner out of Palmer in Pennsylvania on a drive well done here tonight on the Orange County Fair Speedway. They will take time trials, and the big block modifies to determine their heat starting spot. We are, of course, not in a points chase out here anymore as of last Saturday night with the 2011 point season wrapping up for all divisions here at the Orange County Fair Speedway. Three lap time trial. Schultz on a mission out here. Got a great groove war in. Hunterlin, relative newcomer to the Orange County Fair Speedway in this division only. Good uh, pure stock driver for many years, Kurt Hunterlin. Still had some uh, straight stock driving chores this season as well. Checkered flag comes out for Chris Schultz. Yeah, the... Uh, 25 car, Coca-Cola from here in Middletown. The distinctive hardwood floors, 25 car. This is Mikey Coca. Also chasing him around is the 53 car, the Darrell Davis. Double D Motorsports entry from uh, Stony Point, New York, Mike Ruggiero. Ruggiero now in the 53 car. Builds up a full head of steam going out of turn number two. Trying to hunt down, actually, the 25 car of Mikey Coca. Two great uh, long-time uh, modified campaigners here at this legendary House of Power doing a great job. Coker comes in with the 21.883 lap time just to tick off from Schultz's time. While Ruggiero back up into the 22 second category, 22.031. Checkered flag coming out of this pair of time trialers right now. Here is Mikey Coca. 21850 and Ruggiero Saturday night here at the Speedway. That's his regular car from the uh, Ackroyd Speedway campaign this year. Whitehead on the clock right now as he takes him down the back straight away. Tommy Heinley, a longtime campaigner for many a seasons gone by at the Speedway. The only his second stop though in the 2011 campaign. First lap time coming out right now for Chris Whitehead. A 21.746, a very fast lap for Chris Whitehead. That'll put him on top of the world right now. 22.409 for Tommy Hindley. Here we come on a turn number four. On the speedway right now, Cliff Airman on a Bob Watt, New Jersey in the Sparta Trucking, number 32 car. And on the Port Jervis, New York, he's doing double duty here tonight in a sprint car as well. That being the Len and Joe's Pizza Shop sponsored big block. That's Philly, Van Inwinged. Uh, Chris Whitehead, fast timer so far with a 21.746. 21.954. 21 21.842 for Van Inwingen, not too shabby. Got to beat that 21.746 just turned in by Chris Whitehead a second ago. Checkered flag comes out, second lap time. Four. 
Cliff Harbin. 21-8-1-3, and Van Imlingen's second time is a 21-6-1-2. 21-6-1-2 by Van Imlingen. Put him on the top shelf right now. This is the Bullfrog, Jeremy Markle. Danny Creed, the winner last night over the Accord Speedway. He lights him up right now, down there out of turn number two. Markle a regular throughout the 2011 season as he's been throughout the balance of his racing career. And Markle down in the back straightaway right now. Both cars on the clock looking for their first lap time. Remember, time to beat right now is the 21-612 by Billy Van Inwingen. 21-905 by Danny Creeden. 22-153 by the Bullfrog. Second lap, they'll lock him in, take the fastest one of the two. Here is Danny Creeden, second lap time. 21.675, just a tad off the clock, and a 21.933. So put Creeden second in the line right now behind Van Inwingen. Still Van Inwingen, the fastest time of a 21.612. Chuck, usually a rim rider here at the fairgrounds, did not do so on that first jump through turns number one and two. Here's the Monticello Tornado right now with the first lap time of 21.857. 21, the second category, you gotta be in. Chucky comes in with a 22.022. Well, remember, they gotta beat Van Inwingen's 21.612 followed by Creedence 21675. Way up the banking this time, and he comes in with a second lap time. Uh, 21857 and 21802. So 21802, the second lap time for Chuck McKee. Still keep Van Inwingen on the, the stands auto body. Sponsored Big Block, this is the Brewster Burner, Davey Werber. Buick turns on the clock right now. And here's Wilbur in a uh, sporadic visit to the Orange County Speedway. Saw him last Saturday night. This Saturday night, we know we will see him on Eastern States weekend. There's Wilbur pedaling down in the back straightaway right now. And Yurik about to uh, turn the clock off for his first lap time. 21.717, not too shabby for the veteran. 22402, first lap time for the Brewster Burner. Remember, got to beat the 21 6, 7, 6, 1, 2, turned in by Van Inwingen. Well, he did it a 21 5, 3, 3 for Richie Urich, put him up on the top shelf. And a 22 3, 1, 7. So Urich now on the top shelf with a 21 5, 3, 3. Van Imwingen would be second with his 21-612, followed by Creedon. Uh, top move after almost going just a tad bit wide. It looked almost like the 93 of Hollywood was going to follow the same trick. Here's Leto on a turn number four right now. We'll see what that little bumble may have cost him. 21-901, not too shabby for the judge in his first lap around the speedway. 22-116 by Hollywood Craig Mitchell. Let's see if Lido can turn that up just a notch on his second lap around the 5-8 mile. Here's Lido way up the banking that time. 21-810, a little bit better, but still will not upseat Urich. Van Imwingen or Creedon for top three. 21-905, Hollywood got a little bit quicker. Green lights quickly get turned on the speedway, and the clocks go on as they ramble on a turn number four right now. Dodd in that Bruce Excavation number 88 car. Lot of talent, lot of laps in the seat of that 88 big block modified. A guy who, over the last 30 years here at this hallowed house of power, has worked his way up through the ranks. Remember him in a full-bodied automobile when he first started his career. Through the Orange County Speedway. Dodd up the banking on a turn number four. And Burger Steve up the wild side as well. 22-137 for Dodd and a 22-23-550 for Burger Steve, Stevie Walsh. 
Checkered flag coming out. Let's see if Dodd can turn up the wick this time. Twenty-one seven seven three. Definitely got quick. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Dodd in trouble. Topping the Uke tire and took him head over heels. Twenty three zero three eight quickly Meyer down there in turns three and four throttles off to the outside. Looks for the checkered flag and try and bump that up just a notch this time. 21.58 puts him probably somewhere around the third or fourth spot right now for Tommy Meyer. While Pasquale's second lap time will be 22.500 of 21.588. A Pizza 97 car from Slate Hill. This is Jerry Higby. Quickly, Captain Kirk takes the green flag, swallows it down there through turns one and two. And here's Higby. The uh, Beaver Kill, poor Beaver Trout Hatchery, number 97 car. White flag comes out. 22196 for Captain Kirk. First time around. Let's take a look at Hickey's time. Hey, a 21449 for Jerry Higby. Put him up on the top shelf right now. 21449 for the Higfab 97 car. 22001 for Captain Kirk. He'll lock that time in. Here's Higby. Let's see if he can do better. 21334 for Jerry Higby. Back in the uh, 70s. When Lord Holland Sr. ran the 280 number down there at the Nazareth Raceway. And then, of course, in the late 80s, the late Brad Holland, son of Lord, who did a great job here at the Orange County Speedway until his uh, very untimely passing in a highway accident. That left Justin to grow up and take the controls of the family racing entourage. 22185 for Bobby McGannon. And Justin Holland, 22, 9-7-0, by Justin Holland. Uh, still carries, of course, that 280 number, as his uh, father made famous. 22-1-7-4, second lap time for Big Brother Bob McGannon. And here's Justin Holland on a weight leak. 22 the starting spot for the feature. Winner of the next heat will be the second starting spot. Winner of the third heat will be the third starting spot. You can figure that one out. That's not too hard. And so on down the line. Second place finisher, of course, would be your fourth starter in tonight's feature. Here we come on a turn of a four green flag cross. Sweet. Go racing. Andy Reeves picks up the number one spot at the drop of the green flag. Here comes Jason Rowe, and they shuffle the deck in a wild scramble for the number three and four spots. Down the back straightaway, Smickla back pedals out of the top five as Mark Bishop works well in the double O cart. Out of turn number four, they'll put lot number one up in lights this time. Barrier into the number three spot, but as he a fourth, Bishop is back there in slot number five. Smickla rides the number seven spot as uh, Chris Stevens occupies spot number six on the fairgrounds. Randy Green then back there in the final spot. Well, he puts a little bit of steam between himself and Johnny Ferrier. We're talking about your race leader, Andrew Reeves, a stony pointer. As they single file on a turn number two, Jason Rowe runs the number three spot, but as he a fourth, and now Chris Stevens gets the wick turned up on his mount, picks up the number five spot, works the outside part of the speedway down there through three and four. Stevens on the outside of Bishop this time. Stevens takes over spot number five. Bishop six, Smith was seventh. Randy Green back there in the number eight spot. 
Field works through down in three and four right now. Race leader is still Andy Reeves with John Ferrier, the M&H Tractor Company number 11 car. He is getting quicker as the laps tick on. Ferrier's got the periscope up on the 11 car and he is hunting down Andy Reeves in the 27 machine. At the halfway point this time, four laps down, three and a half more laps to go as they work on a turn number four this time. And Reeves can hear footprints in the hallway. Yes, it is Ferrier in those Simpson Fuzzy Bunny slippers right now. As Ferrier closes in on Reeves, it's going to be a dogfight for the number one position. Watch him out of turn number two this time. Rowe by himself back there in the number three spot. Venezia fourth, Stevens fifth, Bishop sixth, Miklas seventh, followed by Randy Green in slot number eight. Top two drivers locked in battle as they work on a turn number four this time. Coming up on two laps to go. And here's Ferrier. Ferrier puts the power down to the inside. Reeves came down to take the uh, for sale sign out of the front yard that time. Holds on to a share of real estate on a turn number two and down the back straightaway. Reeves know that the competition is building and he is right on his heels right now. Ferrier just waiting for Reeves to slip up just a notch. He's got to try and have to get him on the inside if it's going to work at all for him. White flag comes out. Four more left-hand turns of magic right now as they work off the high-speed Ouija board on a turn number two and down the back straightaway. It's all Andy Reeves, but here comes Ferrier. One last shot at it, and Ferrier puts the nose down to the inside. Ferrier back down of it, down through three and four. Transponder stand by. Here's the winner of the first of three transfer events for the Dirt Car Sports Band. The win goes to Andy Reeves. John Ferrier right there in spot number two. Jason Rowe was third. Frankie Venezia fourth. Frank Stevens in spot number five. Chris Stevens and Mark Bishop in spot six. Johnny Smickla seventh. And Randy Green in spot number eight. Well, there you have it. Your first eight cars transferred to their Dirt Car Sportsman feature event from this Guys, last. No rain checks will be offered. Don't look for the blue light, but you can certainly get a jump on your uh, most popular driver ballot submissions. Two bucks a ballot. That's not too shabby. While supplies last. Here we come on a turn number four. Mike Skelly on the outside. Brian Crummel down on the inside. Crummel, very popular campaigner. Wow, bottom side opens up the waters part. Here comes point champ Gary Edwards Jr. Three wide down the back straightaway. Well, you got two point champions racing for the number three spot down there in turns three and four. Kevin Ward, former pro stock driver at the Speedway, point champion this year at the Accord Speedway. And Gary Edwards Jr., our own point champion at the Orange County Fairgrounds, runs three and four right now. Boniface back in spot five. Patrick Murphy runs in spot number six. Top two drivers locked in battle down there through three and four right now. They include the 72 car, Mike Skelly, and the 44 car of BK Speed, Brian Crummel. Crummel on a turn number two, trying to build up a full head of steam down the back straightaway. Pedal as fast as his little angles will carry him. Close the gap on Skelly. Skelly cutting his teeth here at the Orange County Speedway in the 11 racing season and doing a pretty good job of things, looking very much faster as the season progressed. Skelly holds on to it right now. Brother, of course, a very popular pro stock campaigner here at the Speedway. All right, a street stock campaigner, I should say. Crummel second, Edwards is third, Ward fourth, Boniface Jr. back in spot five, followed by Murphy in slot number six. Field down through turns number three and four this time. The race leader is still the 72 car, Mike Skelly. Skelly now can hear some horsepower build upon his buttocks, and it's the number 44 car right there on his heels down the back straightaway. Crummel looks for the easy way around Skelly. I don't think there will be an easy way because Skelly is working high and wild out here at the fairgrounds tonight. That car working very well, driving a great groove also to hold on to the number one spot. He's going to do it. He'll have to do it on the inside. Skelly giving him all the room he might need on the inside, but Crummel kind of binds up when he tries to make that car work on the inside groove. Crummel keeps his eyes on Skelly down in the back straightaway. Edwards is third. Kevin Ward fourth. And Boniface back in spot number five. On the top side right now. See the two-to-go side come out. Skelly in command of the drive on a turn number two. Looking to look for the white flag next time. Patrick Murphy in trouble. Boy, he's got an axle bobbling on that uh, right rear corner of the P3 car. Sets her up for the entrance into the pit area. White flag comes out. Skelly knows no time to falter because he's got trouble all over him. 
like a buzzard on roadkill, swoops down upon him on a turn number two right now. Crumble cannot find the extra HPs to get by Skelly. Two more left-hand turns than a checkered flag. Here we come. Checkered flag in hand. Second qualifier brought to us by Golden Area Furniture and Superior Remodeling. The wind goes to the 72 car, Mike Skelly. Blaine Crumble will be second. A smoking Gary Edwards third. Kevin Ward is fourth. Kenny Boniface is in spot five. Could be trouble for the 21 junior of Gary Edwards. A lot of smoke began to pour out of that car, and he wooed her up a bit coming out of turn number four. Usually smoke is terminal. That could be problems for the feature event tonight. That point season ended just in the nick of time. Third, third qualifier for the Dirt Car Sportsman. Johnny Almick up there on pole. Spot where he's used to be back in his uh, full federal career here at the Speedway. Here we come. On a turn number four, we go racing. Danny Crunk on the outside. The K3 automobile. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Er. Here we come, from turn number four, green flag flies. Almec, the finish line, 38 car, picks up the number one spot this time. That's where he started this event in, but down on the inside of the speedway goes Anthony Perego. That's not good for Almec. Lights on the speedway. Oh, man. Yay! Going back to green flag racing. One lap old is this third, la third qualifier. Here we come on a turn number four. Anthony Perego will waste no time at all. Tyler Odendahl, that Saft Electric number nine car, keeps an eye on him down there in turn number two. Squatting on a turn number two is the Papa Squat three car. That is RJ Smickla securing the number three spot down the back straightaway. Feel out of turn number four, Danny Kronk back there in spot number four in the K3 machine. Smickla. Trying to wipe Odendahl on a spot number two as he works on the back straightaway this time. Odendahl knows that there's a hot shoe upon him. Odendahl, that's South Electric number nine car. Works in the center line of the speedway down through turns number three and four. Race lead still in the hands of Anthony Perego, the AJ Cavalero produce sponsor to Marine Team Machine. Car co sponsored by Alex's Marine as they work down the back straightaway. Odendahl secures spot number two. Smickla, back there in the number three spot, Danny Kronk is fourth, then uh, Chris Bakke in spot five, Johnny Almick in sixth, and seventh is Justin Dawsey in the 39 car. Halfway sign comes out this top. Four laps down and four to go. On the top side now of this third qualifying event for the Dirt Car Sportsman. Heads up start, third starting spot in tonight's feature event will be determined off the winner of this event. Looks like it's going to be Anthony Perego, and that could put a smile on his face for a feature dash effort here tonight. Caution lights on, trouble down in turn number four. It is the 97 car of Chris Botke in trouble. Caution lights out. We go back to green flag racing excitement. Here is the young Anthony Perego on a turn number four. Odie Dodie back there in the number two spot right now. Tyler Odendahl, that SAF number nine car, works into the number two spot. R.J. Smickla, clean sweep of spot number three in the Papa Squat Portable Toilets number three car. Then you've got Danny Kronk back there in the K3 racing machinery. Kronk in the Campbell Construction number three car works the number four spot. Amick, by the way, has made his way up to spot number five, and Justin Gauzet makes his way back there in the number six slot. 
to look for the white flag next time by in this third and final qualifier for the dirt car sportsmen. Uh, white flag comes out. Paul of the mile remains right now. And Perego with a whole gaggle full of space between himself and Tyler Rodendahl. Checkered flag coming out this time. The win goes to the young driver out of Newburgh, New York. This is the 18 machine of Anthony Perego. Second spot, Audi Doty. Tyler Rodendahl, the number nine guard. R.J. Smickler for spot number three. Danny Kronk is fourth. Johnny Almec in spot number five. Justin Gazi in slot number six. Well, there you have it qualifying, and they all qualify for the feature event. Go down the back straight away. All right, all three and a half. Yeah, somebody only got one headlight on down there, so that's, that counts for at least a half. Salute to the Pro Stocks. Their 15 lap feature event is now upon us. Here we come on a turn number four, green flag flies. Dutta on the inside and Velde. Big John on the outside aboard the 17 V car out of Montague, New Jersey in the Velde racing car. Mikey Dutta down the back straight from Poughkeepsie, a 2008 champion and a 2011 track champion here at this legendary house of power. They work down through turns number three and four. Meanwhile, little Joel Burns in the 21 car from right here at Middletown, the TJ Motorsports, Ken LeBaugh trucking. Colonial Diner, Rooftop Shuffler works back there in the number four spot right now. Troy Arnold has got by him for the number three spot. Arnold in the number 73 J car. Down in the back straightaway all by himself in that 73 J car. He piloted here all season long. From right here in Middletown, the Vermont Construction. Uncle Stosh's Pickles, that's a product sponsor, of course, for Troy Arnold. Jim and Jay Pepin back there. Julius Pepin, we call him around the speedway from Ridgefield, Connecticut. Running back there in the number five spot. The WeDoLines.com Village Earthworks, number 33 machine. Rob Rowe back there in the Wayne Taylor Flying taxi cab, 58 car. Running in spot number six, then Sean Post, the postman. A beautiful paint job on that 111 car this year. First time we've seen him at the 5 8 mile all season long, but a long time steady campaigner in seasons gone by. Mikey Dutka, multi time winner of the 2011 campaign at the Speedway to secure the biggest uh, trophy at the awards benefit. Five laps old, 33 to third percent home to a checkered flag this time for Mikey Dutka. Velde, Big John into the number two slot, cannot close the gap on Dutka, but he's keeping an eye on him now on a turn number two. Troy Arnold lost some footing that time as his car washed way up the turn two area wall. Lost about the area, three car lengths as they came out of turn number two. Little Joel Burns back there in the number four spot. Jam and Jay's in spot number five. And now Rob Rowe runs the number six spot in the Taylor 58 car. And he's getting testy as time rolls on. Those uh, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth cars all running within a uh, stone's throw of each other. Which that wouldn't be very nice, but they're definitely within a stone's throw of each other. Mikey Dutka securing the field with about a five car length gap on Velde. Velde cannot close the gap back there in the number two spot. Fourth place battle is on. Pepin puts a nose down to the inside on the rooftop shuffler. LJ holds on to the number four place battle. Says, whoa, no you don't. Holds on to the number four spot. Holds Jam and Jay at bay for spot number five. Coming up on the halfway side this time. Eight laps down and seven remain in the pro stock feature event. No more points to be awarded. Just a whole lot of attaboys and bragging rights and of course the purse money as well. Trouble down in turn number four. Sean Post lost a handle. 
in that sleek looking 111 machine that will bring out the yellow right now after eight laps of competition. Back to green flag racing this time. And we've got yellow, yellow, yellow. We'll tell you why, why, why. The number 58 of Rob Rowe lost a handle on things at the drop of the green. Still eight laps down at the halfway point. That does call for a single file restart. Mikey Dutka, 29 year old driver from Garnerville, New York. Pilot at the uh, Active Automotive all week long. Race driver extraordinaire on a Saturday night here at the Orange County Speedway. Here he comes on a turn number four right now. We go back to green flag excitement. Velde tries to hold him at bay. Velde pitches that yellow 17 machine down to the inside of turn one and two that time. But Dutka flips a boogie out the wing window and it sticks to Velde's tear off. Dutka holds on to the uh, number one position right now. Keeps the field at bay on a turn number four. Mikey Dutka, your race leader. After nine laps of competition, Troy Arnold cannot close the gap back there in spot number three. Julius Pepin runs the number four spot. Joel Mearns back in spot number five. Robert runs in sixth, and Sean Post still back there in spot number seven. So Dutka securing the run again. Ah, the field as they work down the back straightaway now moves away from things quite easily. Puts up on a five, six car length jaunt between himself and Big John Velde. Yeah, the Velde Racing 17 V machine. Velde still second. Arnold trying to close the gap back there. That's uh, Arnold Detroit in the 73 J car. Pepin runs fourth. LJ back there in spot number five and Rowe all over him. Rose down to the inside this time against LJ in a wild number five place battle. LJ holds the field at bay down the back stretch right now, holds on to the number five spot. He's got Rob Rowe to deal with, though. Rowe rebounding back to the Taylor Taxi 58 machine. Dudka going to put another notch in the gun handle in his 2011 campaign here at the Orange County Fairgrounds. Will not count for points. He's already got that biggest trophy secured on the night of the awards banquet. Dudka looks for the two to go side. Coming out of turn number four this time. 13 laps old is now this feature event. White flag in the fairgrounds right now for Mikey Dutka. Dutka getting faster and faster as the clock rolls on. Second spot battle will not take shape as we thought it might have. Record flag, they say, from Mission Control. Here we come. On a turn number four, the win goes to Mikey. Mikey, Mikey Dutka. John Velde second, Troy Arnold will be third, Jam and Jay Pepin is fourth, LJ spot five, Rob Rowe is in slot number six with Sean Post. Will be uh, posted with spot number seven. 21 car percolates back there in the number three spot. Country Chevrolet Camaro pace car drops the field of big block modifieds off for their first of three qualifiers. Here we come on a turn number four. Three fly cars, we go racing. Well, the best of the best in the 2011 racing season. These guys went on it last Saturday night for the point title. They're going at it now for a qualifying heat win. Tommy Meyer yells out the wing window, na, 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 as he grabs the number one spot away from Jerry Higby. Meyer on top of things right now, and a very fast-paced qualifier. Put Meyer into the number one seat right now, and Higby back there in the catbird position. Bob McGannon rides in three, Leto is fourth, Kirk Horton back in spot five, and Justin Holland rides in spot number six. Field scrambles on a turn number four. Race leader is Phil Thomas Meyer. 
who started back there in the uh, second desk. As school is now in session, and Meyer at the head of the class brings that pack of big block bonafides down into turn number four. Meyer in command of the drive right now. Higby trying to play catch up. That's better than playing with mustard. McGann in third. He's got Lido to deal with very, very soon as Lido's building up a full head of steam down the back straightaway. Quickly strolling up to the halfway point, four laps down. And four to go, Captain Kirk back there in spot number five. Justin Holland on a White Lake, the Rockbusters 280 car. Works back there in spot number six. They'll all qualify. He's already into the big dance here tonight. Remember, winner tonight, guaranteed starter for the Eastern States 200. Field out of turn number four on the top side. Race leader is still Tommy Meyer, the 33 and a third car. Great groove, way up wide that time on a turn number two. Winner tonight will go seventh in the feature on Eastern State Sunday afternoon. Guaranteed starter, seventh starting spot. Not too shabby for a feature event win on a Saturday night. And Meyer slowing something wrong with the Barry's Lawn Service car. Tommy Meyer's car is shut off. It says no to the driver down the back straightaway. Meyer's car is in trouble. He'll drift it down behind pit wall. Jerry Higby assumes the number one spot. Jeremy fell off the wheel in the 33 and a third car, rolled him up down the back straightaway, put him down behind pit wall early. Checkered flag, and he set the fly for the first of three Golden Area Furniture Superior remodeling uh, qualifying runs. The win will go to the 97 car, Jerry Higby. Second spot will be the 21 about McGann in third. Johnny Leto, fourth is Captain Kirk Horton. And fifth is Chris uh, Justin Holland in the 280 car. So there you have it. Top five finishers, all qualifiers. And place starting spot in Eastern States 200, awarded to the future winner of the big. Set to go racing, second qualifying event for the big block modifies. Here we come. Out of turn number four, green flag flies, and we pull the trigger. Well, we pull the trigger, and she shot a blank. Hate when that happens. Yurik is your pole sitter. He's your pace setter. He's in the number 10 car. Creedence 11. Let's go numerically. Going to try it once again. 10 goes before 11. Correct. Okay, take two for heat number two. Here they come. Out of turn number four. Creighton leaning on Schultze on a turn number two that time, but down the back straightaway, Hollywood Craig Mitchell gets a bite onto the inside. The board, the FP hats, number 93 X car. They fight for the number four spot on a turn number four. Leader is Richie Yurick in the country Chevrolet car. Third spot battle is on. Mitchell center lines it with Creighton caught up on the wild slide of things. Third spot side by side. They race each other down the back straightaway. It's going to be Hollywood Craig Mitchell winning that draw down the back chute. Creedon tucks it in behind him right now. We'll take him as a drafting partner down yonder on a turn number four. Fifth place is being occupied by the uh, 17 of Tommy Hindley. Hindley in the number 17 machine. Then it's Cliff Airman, the big red race car, the number 32 back there in spot number six. Davey Werber, the Stan's auto body car. The Brewster Burner runs in spot number seven. Burger Steve up the tail side there in spot number eight. Three laps have been put to the test this time. Richie Urich got a shot to New York. Holds on to the number one spot, securing the field right now. Over the rock, Christopher Schultz in the 24 machine. The family uh, coach down the back straightaway. That Liberty Rock crushing car. Field down through three and four. Coming up on the halfway side. Four laps down and four to go for Richie Urich.
Schultz, he sees nothing but the number two spot down the back straightaway right now. Of course, if Colonel Klink was nearby, it'd be a whole different story. Meanwhile, you're in command of the drive. Schultz is second. Mitchell third right now, Heinley fourth. Breeden back to spot number five. Airman down to the inside, tries to make a break into the number five spot with the uh, Sparta trucking number 32 car. Creighton holds him off at bay aboard the RGH construction number 11. Coming up on two laps to go. Two to go this time by for Richie Urick. And the Collier family sponsored number 10 machine. The A through Z, uh, trucking and landscape, top soil haulers, number 10 car works in that number uh, one spot. White flag coming out right now. Yurik looks like a convincing win for the qualifier by Richie Yurik. Schultze will be in spot number two. Checker flag gets set to fly, winning the second big block modified qualifier. The number 10 car, the legendary Richie Yurik. Here he comes on a turn number four. Second spot will be Chris Schultz. Third is Craig Mitchell. Fourth spot, Tommy Huntley, followed by Danny Creighton and Cliff Airman with D.B. Werber in spot number seven. Here we come on a turn number four, green flag flies. Three, two, go, la, 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 let me see. Go. Wow, Whitehead crosses over, swaps down to the inside of the speedway, but meanwhile, Van Inwingen was alive and kicking. Here comes the tornado down the back straightaway. This is Timmy Heinley on a Monticello, New York. Heinley, a great driver last Saturday night, found him in victory lane at the end of the feature event. Runs for the number three spot right now, but the Chuck Wagon works into the number three groove down to the inside. That's Chuck McKee hugging the inside lane on a turn number two. Timmy Heinley works in spot number four. Now, here comes the Bullfrog, hopping off the lily pad for the number five spot. Jeremy Markle out of Port Jervis, New York, runs in the number five position right now, puts Mikey Virginia back in the number six position. Six cars do qualify. Billy Pasquale back in spot number seven. Kurt Hunderlin runs the number eight position. Uh, nobody steps out of line, working down the back straightaway. Race lead still in the hands of Billy Van Inwinjed. Uh, And then when Jin in command of the drive right now, works down the back straight away, the Lennon Joe's Pizza Shop car. I hope that's a product sponsor for him, keeps the crew uh, well fed. As we ramble up to the halfway point this time, four laps down and four to go for Van Inman Jin the 20 point machine. Chris Whitehead, the Vernon Poon Spa, number 244 car, out of Vernon, New Jersey, back there in the number two spot. The Middletown Missile, Chuck McKee. Works in spot number three as Heintley tries to rebound on the top side. Last the half lap charge right now for McKee. Try and hold off the high flying Timmy Heintley. Heintley works the outside lane, takes a shortcut through Distal Burger's pasture on a turn number two. Marco by himself in spot three. Ruggiero, a stony pointer back in spot number four. And Billy Pasquale, spot five. Hunderland in trouble, slowing and dropping off the pace on the inside and of turn number two. Saw the two to go sign offered to the field that time. Whitehead getting quicker. Heinley's on the outside, pedaling very, very fast, but seemingly cannot make a move past Chuckford McKee. White flag getting set to fly right now. Good battle between McKee and Heinley. Long time campaigners in this big block modified division. Last lap racing action, third qualifier for the big block modifieds. And watch the last late lap charge for the number three place battle. Here's Heinley on the outside, but the win will go to the 23 car. Billy Van Inwingen. Second spot, Chris Whitehead. Third is Chuck McKee. Fourth, Timmy Heinley. Fifth is the 79 car, Jeremy Markle. Followed by Mike Ruggiero and the three of Billy Pasquale. Well, there you have it. Qualify now wrapped up for the big block modifieds. Six cars qualify, here we come, down the home straightaway.
Jeff Van Steenberg in the number one car. Grabs that spot away, and wow, does he build up a full head of steam. PDQ on the field, down the back straight away. Dusty Purdy in the 83 car, and they are up against the masonry down there in turn number three. Yellow lights, come on. Yellow lights on the speedway, the A main. So, caution lights have been turned out. Country Chevrolet Camaro pace car back down to the inside. Here we come, down through turns number three and four. All right, we go back to green flag racing. The marshal likes what he sees, and green lights come on. From the inside, by Jeff Van Steenberg, and he waves bye-bye to Dusty Purdy in the 83 car. Purdy in the number two spot down the back straight away. Tyler Chartrand running strong in the number 12 team machine off to the inside of turn number four this time. Third spot runner right now is the number 07 car. Uh, Brett Jaycox, a top point man in the CRSA's point standings. While the 29 car, Bob Art Kaiser rides the number four spot down the back straightaway. And spot number five is the number 12. That's Tyler Chartrand right now in the 12th T car. Remember, top four will reach off in their starting spot, but Van Steenberg is holding the field at bay. Jeff Taylor is in the number five spot aboard that number 17 car. Taylor in the 17T out of uh, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. The All-American Detailing Sponsored Sprinter. Taylor feeling the likes right now of Johnny Matrafel as they work on a turn number two and down the back straight away. Halfway sign coming out this eight lap qualifier for the CRSA Sprinters. Jeff Van Steenberg on a West Show can New York and the Harry Hamilton old Sprinter holds on to the number one spot. Dusty Purdy in a pretty clean car, actually, in the number two position right now. Third spot is still the 07 car of Brett Jaycox. Jaycox out of East Durham, New York, holds on to the number three drive. Fourth spot is still Art Kaiser. Fifth is the 17 of Jeff Taylor. Taylor runs the number five spot down the back straight away. We are coming up on two laps to go. Two to go this time by for Van Steenberg in the beautiful number one car. The TTI luxury motor coaches, Langer Service Center, Woodstock Safety and Mirror, A1 Racing Engine Sprinter. 12 car runs one spot from qualifying right now. That's Tyler Chartrand. He has slipped into the number seven position as the white flag is set to fly this time. Van Steenberg, the race leader, Dusty Purdy is second, Brett Jacobs third, Art Kaiser is then fourth. Fifth spot is still the number 17 T of Jeff Taylor. Checkered flag and he's up the fly, winning the first CRSA sprint car event. That's Jeff Van Steenberg. Dusty Purdy will be pretty good finish in spot number two. Third is Brett Jacobs, fourth is Art Kaiser. Fifth is going to be the 17 T of Jeff Taylor and sixth, the 38 double D, Johnny Matrafalo. Top six qualifiers into the A main feature event. Second heat event will look something like this up on the pole. I'm on a turn number four, and boy, that was anything but pretty. That was U-G-L-E-E. -E. Ugly. We phonetically spell things in that Fulton Company Electric Amsterdam tractor, number 24 car. All right. Emily Van Imogen done already at the drop of the green flag. And Penizak in command of the drive at the drop of the green. Penizak with Brittany Tresh right there in the number two spot. Out of turn number two on the inside. Hey, LJ, welcome aboard. Hey, thanks, Tim. All right. Tresh back there at spot number two right now. She'll look for the number one spot at a great run going last time she was here. Unfortunately, broke about halfway through the feature event. Keep an eye on.
on the J27 machine. That's John Cunningham back there at spot number four. He'll take a peek up to the high side, trying to get around. Well, I can't see the number from here. I'm getting old. Well, Cunningham racing right now, hard and strong against Chad King. King's got the upper hand on that third place battle as King comes around to turn number four. He is in the number three spot. Cunningham is fourth. And then Todd Mayo back there in spot number five, but here comes Scotty Flammer. Flammer, the number 37 car, puts himself into the number five spot. Also following through is Danny Hennessy in the Planet Wings 19 car. Flammer went for a wild ride last time. The CRC Sprint Cars visited the Orange County Fair Speedway. Looks as if he's got the car back on track, trying to break himself into the top five. He's going to go work on the G27 of John Cunningham. Cunningham hangs on to spot number four. Your race leader still down the back straightaway. That's Josh Pinjack. Point leader Chad King tries to close in on the tail side of Brittany Trash as they work down there through turns number three and four this time, but race leader is still Josh Penazak in the three car. Trash is second. Here comes King down the inside. Cunningham works the number four spot. Flammer is fifth. Hennessy back there in spot number six. Mayo Nays is in seventh. Everybody stays nose to tail, Talladega style down the back straight away. The battle right now is on for spot number two. Here comes Chad King down to the inside of Brittany Trash. He'll look for the number two spot this time by five laps around the books. This eight lap heat race action. CRSA Sprint Cars down the back straight away. Brittany Trash hangs on to spot number two. Top side of the second and third qualifier right now. They work down the back straight away. Chad King going to have to use the inside line of the racetrack to get by. Brittany Trash is number two T car. Coming up on two laps to go. Two to go this time by. Trash can feel the heat back there in the number two slot. It's King turning up the wick now on the inside. Doesn't make any bold bonsai move on the inside. Is the only way to get by Brittany Trash. Trash still hangs on to the number two spot. White flag getting set to fly one more time around for the 3P machine of Josh Pinziak. He hangs on to the number one spot. Brittany Trash back there at spot number two. Chad King still looking for the opening for spot number two. Can't do it, sits third. Fourth right now is still the J27 of John Cunningham. Checkered flag getting set to fly this time. Going to the feature event top six qualifiers. They will include your winner, the three P car, Josh Penazak. Second spot, good run for Ricky Trash of the 2T. Chad King will be third. Fourth spot, Johnny Cunningham in the 27 car. Fifth is Scott Flammer, sixth the 19 machine of Danny Hennessy. They all go to the A main top four. We'll redraw, of course. We told you that a couple of times. There's your finish right now for this second of three qualifiers in the CRSA qualifying series. One more qualifying event coming up as they get lined up down there in the short shoot area this time. Well, on the pole. Yeah, beautiful country Chevrolet Camaro. We have the mod right? He'll duck that on off the racing surface. Here they come in rows of two. As they work through turns number three and four. Getting set for the Marshall, Kenny Marshall. Back in the house here at the Orange County First Speedway. Here they come at a turn number four. Getting set to go green flag racing. Seriously, sprint cars at three wide down the foot straight away. Stephanie Stevens out there in the number one spot, and there's Scotty Goodridge in the Rock Fantasy number 30 car, back there in spot number two. Frank Lito back there in spot number three. Looks like we'll complete lap number one. Here they come off in turn number four. Stephanie Stevens showing the young men how to get it done out here tonight. Goodridge now hangs on to spot number two. Lito back there in spot number three. Then it's the 229 on Billy Van Imogen. He's a big block modified driver here. He'll settle back into spot number four. Fourth spot is Van Imogen down the back straight away. Had lots of track time on the 5-8 mile hard play this evening. As Stephanie Stevens brings the 26 car down yonder out of turn number four. Fifth place battle down the center. Van Imogen has it. Here comes Jeremy Quick aboard the 72 entry. Three wide and wild as Quick lost footing on a turn number two and down the back straight away. Keep it on a 6-H machine at J.R. Herbert making some fast moves down the back straight away. He picked up three positions as he heads down into turn number four. So Herbert right now got himself in a qualified spot. 
course, that's Billy Van Imogen back there. He's the man on the bubble right now. Doing battle down to the inside of J.R. Herbert down the back straightaway. Hurlburt started back there in the number eight spot, quickly moved into the number six spot. Now he's securing that run of the field. Stephanie Stevens, still your race leader. Scotty Goodrich is in second. Third spot is the eight of Frankie Lito, followed by the one charm of Tommy Martucci. One of the Martucci out of Mount Bethel, Pennsylvania, comes out of turn number two right now. Van Imogen is fifth. And Hurlburt secures the field in spot number six. Now he makes a move down to the inside on Van Imogen in turn number three and four. Lap number five now in the books. Three laps to go for Stephanie Stevens down the back straightaway. A good quarter of a speedway lead down the back stretch right now. And of course, Scotty Goodridge in his maiden voyage right here in the CRC Sprint Car is doing himself a great job. Popsicle sticks are coming out this time by two laps to go for Stephanie Stevens. Stevens in command of the drive right now. Goodridge is still second. Third spot is still Frankie Lito. But now the battle is on. Here comes the one car to the inside. Tommy Martucci makes the last lap move to the inside to pick up spot number three. Lito may be in trouble. The car is dropping off the pace. Drifts up the banking down the back stretch. He cannot get out of harm's way. As the white flag comes out, no doubt we may see yellow. Yes, we do on the field. Yellow lights on the speedway for the aid of Frankie Lito. In trouble down the back straightaway. The car shut off on a turn number two and a puff and whisper of smoke. Could not get down out of harm's way. Caution lights on. Seven laps down. One to go. In. Here we come. On a turn number four, Stephanie Stevens is going to show the way. Goodrich right there in the number two slot. Down to the inside, rides Tommy Martucci. Thought he could get a slingshot move on a turn number two, but it did not work that time as Goodrich holds on to the number two spot. White flag getting set to fly this time. J.R. Hobart right now sitting just outside the top five. White flag will fly from the Marshal, Kenny Marshall. Stephanie Stevens, still your race leader. Scotty Goodrich still hangs on to spot number two. Martucci back there at spot number three. Fourth is still Herbert. Fifth right now. Well, I can't see the number, but it's Billy Van Imogen right now sitting at spot number six. 15 car down the back straightaway. That's Johnny Virgilio back there aboard the number 15 entry. And it's quality qualifying. Run, checker fly comes out for Stephanie Stevens. Scott Goodrich is second. Tommy Mortucci third. J.R. Herbert is fourth. Johnny Virgilio is fifth. And then Billy Van Imogen, your sixth and final transfer spot holder to ZA Main. Caution light has been turned out around the speedway. Rosa 2, they work down there in turn number 3. Of course, the next time we'll see some of these guys will be the Eve of Destruction. September 17th, here they come off of turn number 4. Steven Kammer, Tim Daly, looks as if he's decided to go to the rear of the bus. Green flag will fly, we go racing! Stephen Cameron down on the inside of the fairgrounds, picks up the number one spot at the drop of the green flag. Matt, no relation to Brooke. Brooke into the number two position, but then it's Charlie Donald. No relation to Old Mac out of turn number two and down the back straightaway. He took that jalopy jet to the 2011 points championship here at the Orange County Speedway, and that was an old baby, baby night for him. Here we come out of turn number four. Well, you can tell Ray Tarantino is aboard the Kenny Reed car number 28 because he's already put that car up there into the top five. Here's Skelly now on the outside. Skelly had a great battle just last night at the Accord Speedway, wound up third. And of course, Tarantino finished second. Steven Camber still hangs on to the number one spot. Matt Burke, and then it's the Jalopy Pet back there in spot number three. Skelly up into the number four spot right now. Comes up tail side to the 2011 point champion. That is Charlie Donald working on a turn number four. Skelly, of course, a multi-time winner also here at the Orange County. Fair Speedway alone spending about a half a season with us here on a Saturday night. A transplant from the Bethel Motor Speedway. Now he picks up the number three spot, puts Donald back into the number four position, and he's got the periscope up on Matt Burke down the back straightaway. The gentleman, Matt Burke, the only man to put on the tinfoil each and every time before he goes racing. He's going to look over to the right side. That's going to be Kevin Skelly up to the outside. Steven Kammer hangs on to the number one spot. Skelly now moves into spot number two down in turn number one. And Tarantino hangs on to the fifth and final Top five spot with Charlie Donald back there in spot number four. A pair of Monte Carlos not related, related to each other, although they've got the same uh, color and same number. Take them one and two down the back straightaway right now. And Skelly 
is a man on a mission closing in on race leader Stephen Cameron out of turn number four this time. It's going to get hot, wide, and wild on the 5 8 mile as these two guys go on it. Here comes Skelly. Slingshots down to the inside. Skelly down to the inside, looking for the number one spot already. Visited victory lane twice here in the 2011 season. He settles back into spot number two, Stephen Cammer. Also a very, very potent drive right there in the 55 car. Also visited victory lane a couple of times. And Cameron now up to the outside. That's going to open up the inside. Here comes Kevin Skelly, side by side down in turn number one. Well, we'll go out at the dogfight right now. A slingshot drag racing out of turn number two. Skelly on the inside, Cameron on the outside. Burke back there in the number three spot. And McDonald just looking at things from spot number four as they work down the back straightaway. Fifth place is still Raymond Tarantino in the number 28 machine. We stay clean and green as they work off a of turn number four. The hot spot on the track has got to be for the number one spot. Side by side again at the line. It's going to be Steven Kammer. A pair of coil cars up there in the number one spot. Skelly stays in the throttle just a little bit longer. He's got the number one position. He'll look to take over the number one spot and does so. Down the back straightaway, but here comes Kammer on the outside. Cameron. Yellow. Oh, baby, baby. Tarantino's in trouble on a turn number two. He will bring out the yellow lights on the speedway. I think the glove compartment door fell open, the cup holder fell off, the fuzzy dice are on the floor, and the owner's manual is just floating aimlessly through space aboard the number 28 car right now. That's the reason for the caution after six laps of competition. Down the back straightaway, Stephen Kammer, Kevin Skelly. Oh, I don't know, but I, uh, I think Kammer may have chose the uh, wrong line as he hangs on down on the inside. Skelly on the outside. Matt Burke sitting back there at spot number three. Here we come at a turn number four. Back to green flag racing. Skelly hard on the loud pedals. They work off at turn number four side by side. Cameron Skelly built drag race down the turn number one. Well, Cameron's got a little bit more seat time here at the Orange County Fairgrounds than does Mr. Skelly. But Skelly got himself a whole more, more feature wins than Cameron does in his racing career. Skelly out around the top side of things right now. Secures the number one spot. Drives away with about a three car length gap. Over the hammer, Stephen Kammer. The jalopy jet, Charlie Donald. He's got Tommy Shortway just behind him. Shortway now in the top five. He's down to the inside. Right now, I'll take a peek down to the inside of the jalopy pet. Charlie bouncing it down the front straightaway. Looking to find a way around Matt Burke down there in turn number one. Skelly out to the number one spot. A little bit of contact between Shortway and Donald. Shortway backs off just a hair or two on a turn number two that time. Donald closing in on Matt Burke down the back straightaway right now. Burke into the number three slot. Got Donald all over him like a bad rash. Oints, ointment, salves, and lotions cannot cure that ill. As uh, the 32 car up, Donald makes his move off to the inside corner. But Burke holds on to the number three challenge. Problems for Tim Daly and Walt Henry on the back straightaway. Going to try and get these guys off of the speedway. We are halfway home right now for Skelly up there in the number one spot. Cammer still second. Matt Burke is third, Charlie Donald fourth, and fifth is Tommy Shortway. On the top side of things right now, this 15 lap. Straight stock feature brought to us again by the Golden Area Furniture Store and Superior Remodeling on a Slate Hill. Skelly and a yellow flag comes on the speedway. Yellow, yellow, yellow. 15 lap feature, that means okay on the Texas Implements. Six more laps remain. Here we come at a turn number four in the restart zone. Kevin Skelly, a very fast start as he comes off at turn number four. Cameron back there at spot number two. Matt Burke, Charlie Donald, and Tommy Shortway. Well, if you don't know where Tommy Shortway is, that's the guy right there on the number nine car with the big light on top. I think it's so that his, uh, his father can find him. That's the guiding light. That's right. Of course, it gets real foggy out here. At least we'll see where Shortway is on the speedway. Down the back straightaway, Skelly builds up a full head of steam, puts about six car lengths to gap between himself and Cameron in the number two spot. Burke just kind of holding his own water back there in the number 12 car, treading water in the third spot. Cannot get ahead of Cameron, but he's got to have Donald to deal with back there in slot number four. Five laps to go that time by. Nobody really stepping out of line. Some of the best in the business here in the pure stock, street stock ranks here with the Orange County Fair Speedway out there doing battle right now. Of course, Kevin Skelly on cruise control up there in the number one spot. Bluetooth intake. Illegal radiator. That's Stephen Cammer back there on spot number two. Cammer's way up on the outside. Oh, he hangs on to it. Almost fed that right front there. Some concrete. Matt Burke starting to reel him in along with Charlie Donald. Well, if Burke knows the line, he'll want to keep his nose down to the inside of the speedway right now to try and close that gap on the hammer. Steve Cammer out of turn number two. Cammer's still into the number two slot. 
Charlie Donald just kind of taking things in, says, what the heck, I've already got the championship, so uh, why not uh, try and waste the car right now to make a move past Matt Burke. Burke still in the number three spot. Donald, no relation to old Mac in spot number four. <sighs> Nobody really stepping out of line that time by. Timmy pretty much covered it all in the last lap as they stay nose to tail, Talladega style down the back straightaway. Tommy Shortway out there in the number nine car down the back straight. Here comes Harry. He's coming. Harry Shortway, one of the oldest street stock drivers we have. And Tim Daly looks as if he's going to run out of gas here on the front stretch again. Coming up on just two laps to go for Kevin Skelly. Skelly still a race leader, maintaining that margin between himself and Stephen Kammer. Kammer also a multi-time winner here at the fairgrounds in the 2011 racing campaign. Burke back in slot three. Donald in spot number four. Coming up on the white flag lap next time by the Golden Area Furniture. Superior remodeling feature event for the street stocks here at the Orange County Speedway as they bump and grind at speeds well under 200 miles per hour. 140 to be exact, says LJ. And think about it, turn number two. And down the back straightaway, final tour of duty for the number 67 of Kevin Skelly. We'll put another notch in his gun handle this Saturday night here at this uh, hallowed house of power. As he picks up yet another dirt car feature event. Had himself a whole handful of asphalt modified features this year. It's Kevin Skelly to win this street stock feature event. Second spot will be Steve Cameron. Third is Matt Burke. Fourth is Charlie Donald. And fifth, the number nine car of Stevie Shortway. Also going to draw the 50-50 at this time. It's worth By the area's largest selection of all wood furnishings, we're talking about the Golden Area Furniture Store, Route 211 right here in Middletown on 207 Wickham Avenue. Here we go. At the drop of the green flag, Andy Reeves picked up the number one spot. Three cars already fighting for the number two place. Here is Michael Skelly aboard the 72 car. Skelly on the outside, and Ferrier going to try and slingshot that to the inside. He has slung shot and made his move into the number two spot this time, chopping off the distance out of turn number two. Skelly looking to pick up his to make a uh, little rebound back up there in the number one spot. He's down to the inside, looking for spot number five. Andy Reeves was on to that number one spot. Already a winner, of course, in this year. But the 23-year-old electrician out of Stony Point, New York, in that DCJ construction big down. That's Andy Reeves. Holds on to the number one spot. Will not look back right now, but he knows that Ferrier is in the house. runs the number seven group right now as uh, Danny Cronk holds on to the number eight spot. They'll work on a turn number four this time. It is Andy Reeves and John Ferrier. Ferrier is trying to start the road right now. And Ferrier up on the outside of the screenplay. Builds up a full head of steam on a turn number two. He'll swap lanes down the back straightaway and put his nose down to the inside of Andy Reeves. Reeves stays hard on the gas pedal. He'll hang on to the number one spot as they work off a turn number four. Brian Cummel still trying to break into the field position. He'll do so now for the work by Mike Skelly. Up there in the number three spot right now. Brando six. Then Odendahl is six. Venezia is seventh. Nick Kenny Bonifaz Jr. sits in spot number eight. Is this 20 lap shootout? That means let's see, let's figure it out. 25% the way home to a checker flag right now as we have March pass on the number five. Here comes BK Speed. He's going to make the top five run exciting right now. Don't count the young Anthony Perino for the mix either. He's going to lead back there in spot for five. Here comes Barrier again down to the inside, looking for the number one spot. Going to try and make that bottom side work, and he may have it done this time by. Here they come off the turn number four, your new race leader. Reeves now, 
Devils back in this one for two. Well, down the back straight away. Brian Cromo building up a full head of Steve on the field. Trying to close in on it. He reads the Stony Pointer back there in the 27 car. They'll work on a turn number four this time. But no two lanes are not a good race to be. Here comes Cobble again down to the inside of Andrew Reed, trying to uproot him out of spot number two right now. The Irishman, Patrick Murphy. He may need a couple of beers after this, but he goes left down on the time by. Well, Anthony Perego, young driver at a Newburgh, New York, going to pull the whole shot on a turn number four this time. As he goes, he breaks it forward and number five spot. If you know what that time, Skelly will love the spot number four. And Ryan Cromo, I don't know, on the top of them all, like half the number two spot away point. And see that his work cut out from him at the halfway point to close the gap on race leader John Ferrier. Ferrier still up there on the number one spot, has done some ARCA racing throughout his racing career. Of course, in the Daytona race for the ARCA series, also a couple of more tracks now. He's racing for his career. He's the number one spot. Also, a full of the sportsman event up at the Syracuse Miles. Still leads the way down the back straightaway. Brian Crumble is second. Third is Reeves, fourth is Borrego, fifth is still Skelly, and he's hanging on by just a thread. And he's got Frankie Menezia now, swoops down on like a puzzle on the road kill, tries to make this break in the top five right now, and Menezia on the inside of Skelly. Skelly says, well, you know you don't hold on to the top five, but well, here's Menezia, another stab at the inside. Right now, Kevin Ward sitting back there at spot number 11 with Chris Stevens of the Frank Stevens Roofing number 83 car. Kevin Ward, first time here in 2011. He is also the 2011 actor of Swedish Open Track Champion. Of course, he picked that championship up just last night with one more point night to go. The race leader, there's still John Ferrier down the back straightaway. 14 laps will be in the books this time by. Ferrier, strong winner this year as a backup driver, actually in the uh, uh, auxiliary car from the Swiss Racing Team. And Ferrier has risen to the top and that team very, very quickly. Probably second. Third spot battle. Here comes Anthony Perego. Says, see that? I can do it. Picked up the number three spot. The race is now back to spot four. Skelly is fifth. And he is sick. Reeves definitely have himself a great run here tonight. Back there in spot number four right now. Skelly still fifth. Sixth right now. Here's Frank Venezia and getting faster by the minute. Ryan Crumble still sits back in spot number two, still has a ways to go. And will be a race leader, John Ferrier. With five laps to go this time by. Well, the only lap was upon him that time as race leader Ferrier swoops down again on the racing Irish. Big up Anthony Murphy. Murphy goes down two laps on the field as he works on a turn number four. And Ferrier on the top side of things. Straight away, the young Brian Crumble on the 44 car. And third spot is the
control. Sports being featured that announced in the winner of the Golden Area Furniture Superior Remodeling feature is the 11 car of John Ferrier. Going to set things downstairs to uh, little Joel Burns. We've got a couple of words of inspiration. Prices, no obligation uh, estimates, all that kind of good stuff by our co sponsor tonight, specializing in roofing, siding, and additions. Four laps and 500 bucks. Time to bet the dog license for the big block. Final five, guys. Four. Holland going to lead him down to turn number one. The Bullfrog, Jeremy Hart, will back there in spot number two. Danny Creighton, big tap of the curled horn down the back straightaway. Would love to take home an extra 500 bucks. Picked up a feature win just last night. The Accord Speedway is on the outside. Creighton with a whole lot more seat time at the legendary House of Power than does Holland. Justin Howard lets her drift up the bank. He's down there in turns number one and two right now. And Howard in command of the drive. He's got great to deal with, but now here comes the bullfrog, Jeremy Markle. Markle that one inside. They'll see the halfway side this time by from little Chief Jerry Enright. On the outside right now, it looks as if it is Justin Holland with Creed. Drifted up the banking that time and slapped the left front of Justin Holland. Holland now drifted back to three. Marco, remarkably, holds on to the number two spot. Gonna try and take a stab at things right now as the white flag will fly. Five hundred dollars. He's just one five hundred dollar paycheck. The eleven car. Bob Danny Creighton and Holland spins between one and two. Yellow lights will come on the speedway. We will not see a checkered flag. Three down, one to go. $500 paycheck, a lone paycheck going out to one of these four guys. Danny Creighton in the RGH construction. That's Jerry Markle, Jer Jeremy Markle. Yeah, Jerry Markle, no, Jeremy Markle. Here we come on a turn number four this time. We are going back to green flag racing action. It's an old baby, baby move for the ball frog. Hey, Jeremy Markle to the number one spot. Here comes Markle right now. It's a remarkable move into the number one position. Out of turn number two and down the back straight away. Airman slips by for the number two spot. Ladies and gentlemen, they'll drift down in turns number three and four. Make that chick payable to Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. Ball throw! Second spot for Jeremy. Third is Danny Creighton. And fourth spot, Justin Holland. Well, in a surprise move off the restart, the Bullfrog hopped off the lily pad, picked up the number one spot, and is now $500 richer. Good run for second place finisher, the 32 car Cliff Airman. Third was Creighton, and fourth, the Bullfrog! Jeremy Markle! I'll tell you what, Jeremy, you didn't have your pillowcase there. Everybody else was kind of caught sleeping on that one. Extra 500 bucks from Superior Remodeling. That's got to feel pretty darn good. Yeah, I really want to thank Superior, you know, for putting up the money. That's awesome, guys. I mean, that's great, you know, give it back to these racers. Uh, we have to change the radiator in this, so we're not even sure if we're going to make it for the feature, so we'll definitely take that. Well, I'll tell you what, you'll have the money to buy a new one if you need to. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. The winner of the Dash for Cash, Jeremy Markle. Now we'll get a quick picture taken down there. Jeremy Markle, a remarkable night for the 79 car here at the Speedway while the CRSA Sprint Car B-Main comes out on the Speedway. And when they do, here's your list of eligible starters up there in the X car from right here. Good luck tonight. Here we 
Julie Cobb on a second of four and green flag flies into the back outside. Run for the number 72 car, Jeremy Pick. Pick up to the punch right now. Picks up the number one spot. Three cars fight for the number two position on the outside. Here comes Warren Alex into the 3 8 car. They'll work him down the back straight away. We stay clean and green lap number one will go up in lights right now. Benny Rizzo taking on the spot of a two. Jamie Christian. Number three position. Christian runs spot number three. Alex in his fourth. And then Billy Barry back there in spot number five. They work down the back to the right now. It looks like Christian going to make a move into the number two spot on two before this time the drag race is on. He's got Christian all around. Christian slingshots down to the inside. Picks up the number two spot. Now the mayor back to slot number three. Still the 3A machine right now. He is the guy on the bubble. Warren Alex in. The bright orange number 38 car down the back straight away. And a great move by Christian down on the inside. Rizzo still sitting in fourth. Got the quick Jeremy Quinn Slater race here. Two out, two out, two out, two out. Rizzo is third, Alex in his fourth, and now a battle for the number five spot. Off to the inside, rides the number 92, or the uh, 18 car, Billy Barry. Barry tries to hold on the spot for five, halfway side, coming out eight lap. He made it Barry slides up the speed right now, looking for Gary Palmer. Palmer now, looking for the number five spot, one spot, out for qualifying. Only third time he's ever been inside that race car, doing a great job down the back straight away. Jeremy Quick right now, set to get. Five laps on the books right now, three laps to go. Warren Alex in his fourth, and then Gary Palmer Jr. in spot number five. Billy Barry then rides in spot number six. And Vinny Tessadaro back there in spot number seven. Uh, two to go, big giant lead for Jeremy Quick down the back straight away. Back here in spot number two, Benny Rizzo still moving in Allison. But here comes Gary Palmer Jr. on a late race charge down the back straight away. White flag, set the fly for the marshal. Second spot. drawn into the number one spot. It's like Stephanie Stevens on the outside aboard the 26 car. The Marshall takes a quick look at things coming out of turn number four. Likes where he sees the green flag. the number one spot. Here comes Van Spienberg down underneath Goodrich. Oh, that's not going to be pretty. Brittany Tresh, that car just had a mind of its own and uh, Said hello to the masonry, drifting down on a turn number two of her own power, but she has no bow pit now. Steenberg. Steenberg up to the outside, back down to the inside, looking for the number one spot. This is your CRSA Sprint Car Dash. As they work off a turn number four, Van Steenberg up to the outside. works down the back straight away. White flag is flying. Here they come on a turn number four. It's a battle and a dog fight. Third spot is Dusty Purdy in spot number five. He gets set to take the old black and white, the checker flag, as they work off a turn number four right now. And it looks as if it's going to go to the Niger's Auto Sales. Car number one of Jeff Van Steenberg. Second spot. Scotty Goodrich and Scotty will be 
the 26 machine of Stephanie Stevens. And Dusty Purdy takes over the number five spot in a Purdy clean car. Five laps the distance. Here they come at a turn number four. Five laps the distance. A guest flag man also up on the orchestrator's perch, LJ. That's my old man. That's Pop Murray's. <laughs> there it goes, Kimberly Reed way up on the outside. Oh, she's in trouble. Blank. Nice mess you've gotten me into. Oh, man. Well, I'll tell you what. A hard, hard shot over there at turn number two. I definitely do not want to be at that house. Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. and beyond. To the Batmobile. Let's go. Well, it might have been green and then followed by brown. You know, we could always just draw for a finish. Well, Kim Markle now gets out of this 61 machine. Oh, boy. You've got troubles, Mac. Tommy z -Band, you got an instant replay on that? Can I see it? No, he's not going to show it to you. <laughs> Caution light going to get turned out around the speedway here in the ladies' crash fest. I mean, powder <coughs> puff. <laughs> and Reed in trouble over in turn number two. Ah, she'll catch up. That's okay. Kim Green Reed. flag flies Debbie Shortway. I do believe she's up there in the number one spot. That's Kevin Skelly, a.k.a. Sideshow Bob, back there in spot number two. We may be able to get a push truck out there without anybody seeing it and get her off the uh, speedway while we're still under green. <laughs> Debbie short way down the back straight away. And in the uh, 67 car, we don't know who. Oh, back out with the uh, pace car. I thought it was a jam car there for a second. Yellow lights on the speedway as they go out to pick up the... Uh, So Kim Reed gets taken down behind pit wall. He started out with five, and in uh, zero laps, we're down to two, three. Doc Stoddard in the 32 car. Debbie Shortway in the 54. And AKA, we don't know who, in the 67. Ms. Somebody, now we know. All right, LJ, I'm going to let you have the honors for this next lap. Oh, gee, thanks. Here they come at a turn number four. I do believe that's going to be Debbie Shortway up there in the number one spot. Look of a career win, number one. Of course, she used to run with the old Pierce Stocks. Holy macaroni! I think that might be Charlie Donald up there in that car. The old jalopy pet. That's Doc's daughter. She's taking over the number one spot down the back straight away. And here comes the white flag. I do believe going to come out this time by. Here she comes off at turn number four. 
We're going to talk to this young lady, obviously, very, very shortly. Throttle must have stuck. No, that's the white flag, honey. Keep going. And now Debbie Shortway picks up the pace. Oh, here they come right now. Maybe problems for the Jalopy Pets car. Down the back straightaway. Here comes Debbie Shortway. They'll split them down the back straightaway. Shortway. Oh, she realizes. Uh-oh, I better go. Oh, she hangs on to it. No, she doesn't. Right into the inside barrier, and it's going to be Debbie Shortway. $15,000 first place paycheck, less $14,999.99. Of course, that's the commission fee that will be removed from that first place purse money. We're going to send... Pulling into victory lane, I do believe, for the first time in her career. Of course, she did some racing with the old Pure Stock Division. Of course, she takes Papa's car out for the ladies in Duro. Ladies and gentlemen, she can hear you now, Debbie Shortway. <laughs> Debbie, you and one other female out here are the only two that are going to be allowed to go home tonight. The rest of these young ladies have wrecked a lot of stuff. Congratulations. I know your family's been down here a long time. Way to go. Thanks. Did you, did you, have, well, obviously you've done this before. You used to race for the old Pure Stock guys, and uh, you come out here in Pop's car. Did you have fun? Yeah. Well, if I know the short ways, these guys are going to be drinking here later on tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, winner of the ladies' powder puff race, Debbie Shortway. So Debbie Shortway down there with the checker flag in hand, the designer uh, racing suit, and a big trophy for the man at home. Still on the racing itinerary for this evening would be back-to-back-to-back -back -to -back feature events for Big Block Modifieds, Dirt Car Sportsman and CRSA Sprint Car. They're a main, so that'll all take place just very shortly from now. So we'll do just a little bit of track maintenance. Call these guys back out for their feature events. Well, of course, while the uh, track maintenance crew has a chance to do some tidying up around the 5 8 mile hard clay, I'd like to make mention of the many fine billboard sponsors that have been with us on board all year long. Meet Seal Coating down there in turn number two, along with Johnston's Toyota, Pinebush Equipment Company, and Portco Energy. Ready? Okay. Caution light has been turned out around the speedway in rows of two. 23 eligible starters. Here they come out of turn number four. Green flag racing. The legendary Richie York gets the jump on the young gun. 
And Higby may be in trouble. Here comes Billy Van Inwich and they are three wide down the back straight away. Boy, three wide for the number six spot down the back shoot. They go, Richie Yurick broke three from the clutches of evil at the top of the green flag. And you can bet your dog license he will not look back. Here is Richie Yurick in the cut rate Chevrolet car while Higby rebounds to the outside of Van Inwingen. They fight for the number two spot right now. It's gonna be Higby, slingshot, slung shot. He's already done it down the back straight away. He's your number two man. Higby, winless here in 2011. Would love to pick up that seventh starting spot the Eastern States 200. Of course, he was a former winner of that event just a few short years ago. They stay clean and green. Lap number two has gone up in light. Big brother, Bobby McGannon back there at spot number four. Three cars there for spot number five, and it's gonna be the judge. Johnny Lito, but don't count out the rock. Chris Schultz, yellow, trouble on the front straight away. Well, that's Justin Holland, the Rock Busters, number 280 car. He done may be busted right now as he goes down behind pit wall. Tough break for Holland. Oh, just where I'm from. Of course, where I come from, they all talk like that. <laughs> Caution light has been turned out around the speedway. I do want to apologize to the uh, to the fan that's standing uh, sitting right down here in front of us. Sorry about the... Uh, the scene that you saw there a little bit earlier, that's all right. <laughs> so here they come down the back straightaway in the restart zone. Richie Urich, your race leader, he'll get the jump on the field. Here comes Billy Van Iwijin doing double duty here tonight to CRC Sprint Cars. Billy Van Iwijin, he'll take over spot number two. Well, the drop of the green flag hits the rebounds on the outside part of the fairgrounds right now, draws in tightly against Richie Urich. Ulick flips a boogie out the wing window and away he goes down the back straight away, picks up the number one spot. Now the third place battle is on. Little slingshot down to the inside against Van and Wingen. He'll take the 23 car way wide and wild down through turns number three and four right now. Putting lap number three up on the scoreboard. Here is Richie Urick. Keep an eye on Chris Schultz, the rock up on the outside. He started just about foot uh, trouble. Mikey Coca down yonder ways in turn number four. Cup holder fell off, down went the Coca-Cola on uh, Mikey Coca's car. Tough break for him. Announcing truck pulls. One o'clock, the local town police showed up, wrote the owner of the pig farm a uh, big, big ticket for your noise ordinance, and we're still here. Here we come. Green flag flies, they are three wide off a of turn number four down the front straightaway. And it's Johnny Lito moving into the number two spot. What a great restart for Lito. He'll go racing down the back straightaway. Jerry Higby, the statesman. Oh, big trouble. Markle's in trouble. Boy, they almost got drop kicked through the goalpost. And meanwhile, Justin Holland is also in trouble at the end of the buffering zone. He pulls away from it. Now, let's see who does not. Jeremy Markle did not in the uh, number 79 car. Clifford Airman in the big red race car. The first one, but the last one, and not the one that's about to happen right now. Caution lights do get turned out. As they motor down the back straightaway, Country Chevrolet Pace Car, the Camaro Pace Car, brought to us in part by the Joy Insurance Agency. Pulls down to the inside, gives that pacing duty back to Richie Yurick aboard the Collier family sponsored 10 car. Here they come down yonder ways on a turn number four at speeds greater than you could possibly imagine. And this time, Jerry Hickey drops into the number two slot. Van Inwingen slides up the banking that lets Lito rebound off to the inside. Watch him now as Christopher Schultz motors out of turn number two. Uh, oh, yellow, 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 yellow. Kurt Hunderland hard into the Uke tires down here in turn number one. I do believe uh, Kurt just got up there in the moose stuff. Bounced it off the wall. Washington Light has been turned out around the Speedway. Three laps are in the books. 27 laps to go. The legendary Richie Urich still up there on the point. Jerry Higby, second. Billy Van Iwijin back there at spot number three. Here they come at a turn number four. Little Chief, Jerry Enright going to wave the green flag. That was in the restart zone. And oh, boy, they are full wide off of turn number four. Down into turn number one. And it's going to be Urich again. While they scramble, still three wide for the number two spot as Higby drifted up the banking on a Wisner Avenue that time, but they'll take him down the back straight away. 
A lot of hard charging. Boy, Richie Urich don't know what he's missing behind him. Really does not care to find out. They'll come out of turn number four this time. And they put lot number four up in lights at the second. Big brother Bobby McGinn. And boy, is this guy making a move. He's already up to the number three spot already. Three wide. Van Inwinchen drifts way out of line that time. Puts himself back alongside of Timmy Hingley. Now Hingley and Van Inwinchen go at it down the back straightaway, but still at the head of the class. Rides Richie Urick in the 10 car. Jerry Higby in the 97. Bob McGinn in the 21. And then the 93 car of Hollywood, Craigford Mitchell. Keep an eye on Tommy Meyer right now doing battle with the captain, Kirk Horton. He can pull in right behind the middle tail. Muscle Chuck McKee down the back straightaway. They'll go three wide down the back stretch. Whitehead on the outside. Here comes McKee to the extreme outside. He'll pick up two spots as they head off at turn number four. Yurick still your race leader. Richie Yurick maintaining the distance, but not by very much because Hickby lurks in the shadows back there in the number two spot. They've only got about a three-car distance between them down the back straightaway. Bob McGann and Boy doing a great job this Saturday night in that 21 car. A strong hold on the number three spot. Another lap going to go down in the record books this time by lap number seven. It is still Richie Urich. Hollywood, Greg Mitchell back there in spot number four right now. And of course, the model Celomaniac, Timmy Hindley, sitting in spot number five. He was last week's feature winner. Johnny Lito is six, Chris Schultz seven. Chris Whitehead is eighth, ninth, is now McKee, and tenth. Well, let's put Tommy Meyer into the tenth spot as he's on the outside of Billy Van Imogen. Meanwhile, Jeremy Markle having trouble down the back, steadily shuts off the car, drifts down behind pit wall, will not bring out the yellow flag. And tough break for Markle, who's been getting bounced around from lily pad to lily pad since the entire drop of the green flag, but on a turn number two, here comes Meyer down the back straightaway, working his way up through the pack like a hot knife through butter, works his way past Van Inwingen right now and maintains the shot to the outside. Richie here has been around the speedway for over 50 plus years right now. He definitely knows the way around this racetrack. Schultz up to the outside, Whitehead, they'll do battle just inside the top 10, down the back straightaway. Tommy Meyer now moves into the 10th position. The Lennon Joe's 23 car, Billy Van Imogen, will settle back in to spot number 11. Well, we won't see a smiling mug on a picture if we only take a picture of the top 10 family at this point. It is still Hickby at the head of the class right now. Biggest smile on that portrait as he is at the number two spot. Cannot close the door on Richie Urich. Urich has been maintaining the distance for the last 10 laps on the speedway. We are one-third the way home to a checkered flag. 20 laps remain on tap. Nobody really stepping out of line that time by. Everybody drafted off of each other down the front straightaway. Good to see Chuck McKee back in action just inside the top 10. Right now he sits ninth with Tommy Meyer starting to come up through. Meyer, your 2011 Big Block Modified Track Champion here at the Speedway. Richie Urich, problems for Creighton. He'll shut it down on the backstretch. Top break for Creighton. Had a good night, bad night, good night, bad night in that order so far. As he heads down behind pit wall right now with the RGH number 11 car. Meanwhile, Timmy Heintley trying to close the gap back there in the number five spot, pedaling very quickly up into the uh, spot where the 93 car occupies right now. That's Craig Mitchell aboard the FP Hats machine. Uh, problem for Billy Van Imogen. He'll shut it off early down the back. Straight away, take the Leonard Joe's 23 car behind the pit wall. Hopefully we'll see him again here later on this evening in the CRSA Sprint Car feature event, but it's still up at the front of the field. It's Richie Urich going to start to reel in some of these back markers and make Burger Steve one of them. Now that might be a chance for, speaking of Burger Steve, a chance for Hickby to play catch up, not Buster, but catch up on the field back there in the number two spot. Hickby needs something like that right now to close the distance and put a challenge on against Urich for the number one position. Urich's been around this game just a tad bit longer than Hickby has as well, and Urich is very talented in lap traffic. He'll come up right now, size up Hunterlin's 47 guard, decide which lane of the speedway he'll get by him and put a lap down. Watch him on a turn number two, bottom side is open up for Yurik. Yurik quickly sneaks out on the inside, lets Hunterlin know you've got the feel breathing down upon your buttocks. Well, we just saw the halfway sign just last lap right now. And now Burger Steve will move down to the inside of the 213 car because here comes your leaders. Higby now trying to reel in Urich over there in turn number two. He'll lose them as they come out. Contact right now between Whitehead and Chris Schultz down in turn number one. Schultz up to the outside. Whitehead back there. He'll settle back into spot number six. Whitehead had a great drive out there earlier tonight in qualifying the 244 car. 
Burek now about to put Berger Steven in the left down to the field as they work down through turns number one and two. Now watch Urich. He'll size up that lap traffic, decide which lane to go around to the safely. Berger Steve drops down to the inside. Urich goes by him, says thank you for the courtesy. Higby, meanwhile, going to try and close the door back there at the number two spot. McGannon's still third. There goes Hunderlid. He may be going down behind pit wall as well. He was a lap car. Well, they bottled him up over there at turn number two right now. Now your top two campaigners have gotten around the buoy down the back straightaway. And of course, that was Stephen Walsh in the 213 car. Yurik's still your leader. Higby is second. By a big brother, Bobby McGannon, back there in spot number three. Craig Mitchell is fourth. And fifth is still the monosyllable maniac, Timmy Heinle. Heinle holds on to the number five spot. Then Johnny Lito, one spot back out of the top five. Runs into number six right now, the Hermans 33 car. There he goes. We talked about him. Schultz is seventh. White at eighth. McKee is ninth. Tommy Meyer is in the number 10 spot, trying to do everything he can to slice away at that slim margin between himself and the uh, Chuck Wagon, the number 19 car, Chuck McKee. But McKee will be a force to be reckoned with, a very high amount of talent aboard that number 19 car, even if he has not run an entire season. Uh, we stay clean and green around the speedway, 10 laps to go, 20 laps are in the books. Richie Urich, looting, looking to pick up yet another feature win. I do believe that'll be in the high 40s as far as career wins here at the Orange County Fair Speedway, hangs on to the number one spot. Higby is still second. Third spot is still big brother Bobby McGannon. Fourth spot, Hollywood, Craig Mitchell. And Burger Steve, well, he's the burger in the sandwich. Well, that was a short stainer for poor Burger Steve, if there ever was one down the back straightaway. Just try and get out of harm's way as the field comes breathing down upon him. Down the back straightaway, that great train of competition marches by Stevie Walsh's 213 machine. But meanwhile, Richie Urich has maintained a great gap over Higby the entire distance long. And Higby just doesn't have that extra horsepower that he needs to close that gap and make a challenge for the number one spot. Third spot is still McGannon, all by his lonesome. Then Craig Mitchell works the number four groove. Back there in spot five is the one car up, Timmy Huntley. Uh, Kirk Horton now also has to get around that buoy there of Burger Steve as they work off at of turn number four. We still stay clean. A green time is winding down, though, for the statesman Jerry Higby. The rest of the car is now getting around. Burger Steve down the back straightaway. There is the legend. And trouble off of turn number two. Wow, that is... Friday, Saturday, Sunday, October the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. You guessed it, numerical order. Yes, the golden anniversary of Eastern States Racing here at the Orange County Fair Spe Speedway. Caution light has been turned out around the speedway. Buck Marl takes the beautiful pace car off the racing surface. Richie Urich, six laps to do some more work. Colcom may be in trouble down the back straightaway. We see him dropping off the pace, and he is pit foul, baby. That's not nice. We see loose wheels and other parts on the racing surface. That was the 24 car of Chris Schultz fairing out the worst of that ugly mess down there between turns. Well, six laps to go this time by. Of course, we're going to get set to go back to green flag racing. Here they come at a turn number four back to green flag racing. Richie Urick leads the way down there at turn number one right now. Here comes the statesman Jerry Higby sliding up the speedway. Middletown missile Chuck McKee. That's going to open up the door for Johnny Lito. And problems for Tommy Heinley on the back straightaway. We're going to get the five to go sign along with Mikey Coca-Cola. He's in trouble on the back stretch as well. Five to go right now for the legendary Richie Yurick. And here comes Jerry Higby. Higby testing the waters down the inside. He'll settle back into spot number two. And the battle is on just outside the top five between Tommy, Timmy Heinley and Chuck McKee. All right, what's happening? Here we go as they come out at turn number four. 26 laps old is this big block modified feature. And Higby's got one last ditch effort at trying to pull a rabbit from the hat. He tugs on Fluffy's ears coming out of turn number two. But meanwhile, it is Urick with the magic wand. And he is in control of the situation right now. Coming up on three laps to go as they ramble out of turn number four. Urick, Higby, McKinnon. Mikey Ruggiero in trouble here on the front straightaway with the Escape RV 53 machine. That's going to move Burger Steve up just one more spot, and I do believe that's going to be a top 10 finish. He 
yellow, yellow, yellow. Trouble, Ruggiero on a turn number two did not clear the speedway surface. We've got just two laps left to this big block modified feature. Last time you'll see these guys before Eastern States weekend. Here they come at a turn number four. Watch Chuck McKee way up on the outside. He's gonna catch a couple of them sleeping. And McKee gets bounced around a little bit. Yurik still up there on the number one spot. Jerry Higby back there in spot number two. Big brother Bobby McGannon's been sitting third all night long. As they head down into turn number three. Down the back straightaway, fifth place battle is on, and here comes Chucky on the inside, and he's gonna try and make one more spot to his liking on a turn number four. Point flag five, five, eight for mile remain. Yurik with a big smile on his mug from here right now. Higby in the number two spot. Robert McGannon rides the number three groove. It's Craig Mitchell back there in spot four. Then Chuck McKee in the 19 car. Checkered flag getting set to fly this time. Ladies and gentlemen, make that check payable to Richard Urich. Second spot, Jerry Hickey, third, Bob McGannon, fourth it is Craig Mitchell in fifth. The number 19 of Chuckford McKee. Hey, the wave lap as they come down the straight with this time, get something up in the air and wave at them. Wish these uh, 24 sprinters well on 25 laps of a main feature event action. Backstretch driving your final time until we uh, bring you back again on Eastern States weekend. Let's flash the lights, honk the horns as they work on a turn number two this time. Light up the midnight sky here at the Great Orange County Fair Speedway as only you can do. The world's greatest tailgate party. It never ends that kickoff. Oh, no, 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 baby, baby. Not till the final checkered flag flies here at this legendary house of power. You look so darn good. We wish you could see it from here. Gotta have to buy that racing video DVD if you want to see what you look like. Well, meanwhile, caution lights get turned out. LJ, we set for some CRSA sprint car feature event action. Before we go green, third row up over there all the way to the right side. You got a headlight out. Here they come at a turn number four green flag racing. They're going to drive them down to turn number one. It's going to be J.R. Hilbert up to the number one spot. And Van Steenberg up there in no man's land. They'll go three, four wide. The bottom up. Problems for Brittany Trash over in turn number two. Now a tough break for Brittany already dropping off the pace down the back straightaway. She may be pit down already. Crowd pleaser from right here at the Orange County. There's a lot of fans on her side here tonight. And could not make the one-lap side. Take a look for her. She's down behind the wall of the time. Keep an eye on Scotty Flammer out there on the 37 machine. They're three wide. Van Steenberg can't make it work down the back straight away. He's been a feature winner here. Of course, Flammer, always a fast, fast campaigner here with the CRSA Sprint Cars. But it is still J.R. Herbert up there on the number one spot. Chad King back there in spot number two to three. Remember, Chad King is your current point. He came into the same main, just three points the leader. As their season winds down, he works down the back straight away on Artie Kaiser. Kaiser on the outside aboard the 29 car. Chad King right there like a shadow in the number three spot. They'll work him on turn number four, but you're racing the remains of EJ. R. Herber. Still sitting in spot number four right now is Tommy Marcusi back there on the beautiful number one car. Then, of course, it's the 3P machine of Josh Kaniak. And right behind him, the J27 machine of John Cunningham sitting just outside the top five. But it is still Herbert leading the way here in lap number four. J.R. Hurlburn aboard that 6H car from Oneida, New York, and the Pearson's building an electrical supply co-sponsored sprinter. He's a true lead. He has on the field right now. Now here comes Martucci on a turn number two. Martucci drawing in tightly against Kaiser down the back straightaway. Mount Bethel, Pennsylvania, that's down near Penargel, and that's, of course, where Ty Scott lives at all those racing greats. So not an unfamiliar challenge in the racing name here in Middletown. Martucci again testing the waters down to the inside. He'll look for the number three spot down the back straightaway. Herbert, still your race leader. Chad King now moved into spot number two. And of course, that's going to grow the point lead here for the CRSA Sprint Cars. Five hops are in the books. We still stay clean and green. Josh Penizic back there in the number three. Pete Car holds on to that number four spot on the field. Driving down through turns number one and two this time. Panizic shows the way onto the inside. Cannot close the gap on that two-car battle for the number two spot. Down the back straightaway. We still got Chad King up there in the 24 car. He runs the number three spot. Art Kaiser is second. Race leader is still J.R. Hurlburt. Now back markers may become the factor. Here's Hurlburt down there in turn number one. He's going to make his way through the back markers right now. Chad King will try and follow suit. Jay Cox right now sits in spot number seven in the 07 car. And of course, right behind him, the 26 machine is Stephanie Stevens. 
she sits in spot number eight. I do believe that's going to be the 38 double D car. Joey Matrafalo. Problems for the 18 machine. He's down to the inside. Herbert, though, about to start to feel the pressure from Chad King. They head down the back straightaway. Herbert caught in lap traffic. This is Chad King's chance to play catch up on the screenway. Down the back straightaway. He's at mustard color car, but he'll still play catch up. Here's Panizic back there in spot number five. Watch Herbert now. He's got to make his way through the back workers, and he's got Chad King goes by. Chad King works into the number one position. King using the lap car as an advantage, and now he's down the back straightaway in the number one spot. Halfway side coming out from the Marshall. Penny Marshall halfway to yellow. We got trouble down in turn number four. Yellow lights come on. Could be Tyler Chartrand aboard your number 12 T car. Brings out the yellows. He slid up against the basin area down there, midway between turns number three and four. Nine laps old is this feature. All right, caution light has been turned out around the speedway. Nine laps are in the books. So that makes it four, five, six, nine to take the shoelace take off. Take your shoes off. 11 yeah, laps okay. to go. <laughs> They get set to go back to green flag racing here at the CRC Sprint Cars. It is Chad King up at the point right now, looking to extend that point lead. Here they come out of turn number four. Keep it high on the Marshall. Kenny Marshall. He gets sets the wave the green flag. We go single file. Cuts in right style. Down into turn number one. Chad King holds on to the number one spot. Hurlburt tries to throw himself into the thick of things right there in the number two spot. Down the back straightaway. Rides Tommy Martucci way down from Mount Bethel, Pennsylvania. Hey, that's down near Bruce Klein's house, by the way. And that's only about 15 minutes away. If anybody really cares, but he works back there at the number three spot as we speak down the back straightaway. Here comes Josh Penizak back there in the number three P car. Penizak down to the inside, keeping on the 07 machine. Brett Jaycox, he's down to the inside, and we got one up against the wall. Down over there in turn number four. That's going to be the mighty Benoit. Benny Rizzo. Yeah, the mayor himself up against the masonry down there between turns number three and four. Yellow lights come back on. Ten laps old is this 20 lap A main. I'm one poker locus, which hates all polokas, what hates honey up and swear em. Why Biffs and I bought them and always have run them, but none of them gets Well, nowhere. after all that, PK finds the big switch. turned out we go back to green flag racing this time here we come on a turn number four and Chad King will show the way watch Panizic down there he slingshot down on the inside grabs spot number three away from Martucci he says here's right back at you on the inside he'll take back over the third spot down the back straight away Panizic back in the number four spot keep an eye on the 07 machine of Brett G Cox starter we back in spot number 10 he sits just outside the top five problems on the back straight away we're going to see the yellow lights. Haven't seen those in a lap and a half. Well, all that action and no additional laps have been scored. This 20-lap nightcap here at the uh, Orange County Pier Speedway this evening. Chad King up there in the number one spot. We told you many times he's your current point leader. Well, it looks like they got the cone pick back up. Good thing, too, so that Kenny Marshall doesn't have to stand down there and is, be the cone. Is that the one from Tollgate Ice Cream I just talked about? I, a what? wrong cone, not a sugar cone. Okay, here we come back to green flag. Racing on a turn number four. Chad King picking up where he left off just a few short moments ago. Here comes Jake Cox down to the inside on the 07 machine. He's on the move, brings into the top five and problems for Hennessy down the back straightaway. Gets a little squirrely off of turn number two. Hennessy riding aboard that Chuck Alisi, number 19 car, the Planet Wings car. Very popular car from around the Orange County area. Meanwhile, Martucci is really great, but he's in his fourth in the field. Jaycox back there in spot number five aboard the 07 car. Brett Jaycox piloting down the back straightaway. He's made his break into the top five running order. 
and Jaycock's a popular CRSA campaigner as well, but can't discount the fact that Chad King is your race leader. Herbert throws himself into the number two spot right now, where Tucci is chawing away at the gap that he's got back there between himself and second place man Herbert. Watch Martucci down the back straightaway. He'll close the gap on Herbert down through turns three and four. Kaiser right now is the man who started on the outside pole or the pole position. He sits in spot number six. Problems for Hennessy on the back straightaway. He'll take the planet wings number 19 car down behind the pit wall. Flammer down to the inside of Scotty Goodrich. Scotty Flammer. He'll move into the top 10 down the back straightaway. Two popular campaigners at Big Block Bottom Heights for many years here at the Orange County Speedway. Meanwhile, keep an eye on Stephanie Stevens running aboard the 26 car. She's running back there in spot number seven, just one notch ahead of the 27 car. That being Johnny Cunningham. Uh, Cunningham in that boogie green, 27 down the back straightaway, he voters. Five laps to go this time, five, five to go. Here you are. And it's going to be Chad King. Keep an eye on Margucci now, starting to get a little bit faster as he hits down the back straightaway. He sits back there in spot number two right now. Flammer up on the outside of the J27 machine. And of course, that's John Cunningham. Flammer tests the waters up on the outside. Time is winding down for Chad King. It's Cotton again, exciting and a battle for the number one spot. He may have some back workers to deal with. That might warm him up just a bit, but it's not going to slow down Tommy Martucci back there in spot number two. Hilbert glides its way, but he's his fourth. And Jaycock's back in spot five. Artie Kaiser sick and Stephanie back there in spot number seven. Stephanie. King again off of turn number four. He's still your race leader down the front straightaway. Martucci sits back there in spot number two. Herbert is third. Fourth right now is the 3P of Josh Pediak. And now sitting in spot number five is the 07 of Je Brett Jaycox. Sitting in spot number eight. That's going to be the 29 machine. Well, I can't add that's going to be Art Kaiser. Kaiser with the 29 car right back here in the number eight spot. Meanwhile, here's Chad King down in turn number one. Now we've got just two more laps left at this 20 lap nightcap. Martucci pulling on Fluffy's ears. He knows that time is a waste in speedy, working down the back straightaway in the number two spot. But meanwhile, Hurlburt all by himself, lots of elbow space in front and behind him in that number six car. He's in spot number three, but he's in his fourth. White fly comes out. Five, eight to a mile remain. Watch him now. Last lap racing action. Martucci closing in on a turn number two. Down the back straightaway, Chad King. We can see the smile on his face from here, but maybe not for long. Here comes Martucci. Wow, in the high side. And they'll work on a turn number four with a ticker play. It goes on the Chad King. Tommy Martucci second, J.R. Hilbert third, Panizic is fourth. And Jacobs in spot number five, then followed by the 29 of Kaiser. Art Kaiser in spot number six. Talk about last lap excitement. When the checker flag was in the air, all of a sudden Martucci in a bolt of horsepower surged right up alongside a point leader, Chad King. But Chad King is the man that they'll make that check payable to tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, pulling into victory lane with the CRSA Sprint cars and extending that point lead. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, Chad King. <laughs> he makes his way over here right now. Chad, I'll tell you what, once you got this thing out to the number one spot, you never look back. Of course, you had a little bit of pressure there with a couple of laps to go, but welcome to the Orange County Fair Speedway Victory Lane. Thank you very much. This is uh, one of my favorite tracks to come to. Uh, I've just been waiting for this time to be here. I got my movie turn for me tonight. I really am. Chad, I gotta ask you, this has got a few pretty good come up for our entry to the last season. So, Chad, I'm sure there's a lot of people that get on there, but once again, you get back here every day. Yeah, I got to thank my crew. 
Yes. Here. I'm sure there's a lot of people you got to thank. Another uh, great run out here for you in 2011. 
Uh, I'd like to start with my pit crew, uh, Little Russ and Big Russ, and uh, my, pit, my family have done a lot for me, and yet again, the sponsors, I can't, uh, can't thank them enough. Uh, Declan Trucking, Jackson Oil, Napa, um, you know, North Branch Welding, and uh, Salton County Engines have all done a lot for me. Oh, and uh, Steve Machine Shop, too, of course. Great power plant. Now, of course, we've, uh, we've got some big races coming up here at the end of the season. Of course, the big East Penn State weekend. You guys see the 67 car here? Absolutely. Well, there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, he wins the street stock feature again here in 2011.